So we'll go three, two, one. Welcome everybody to the next series on uh, Skybird Wash uh, TV chain interviews. <coughs> uh, my name is George Mugambi. For those who don't know, I am a WASH delegate. I work with the Netherlands Red Cross. Uh, I am based in uh, Uganda and I manage the WASH portfolio here in Uganda. And I was the first interviewee of this WASH chain interviews. Uh, my interviewer was uh, none other than Magdalena, who is a WASH advisor for the Austrian Red Cross. So thank you, Magdalena. And now as part of the WASH chain, I, um, I've identified a lovely lady called Jennifer Kumu, who is here with us today. And she is a WASH uh, program officer. She is currently working with the Uganda Red Cross Society. And uh, what's really interesting is that she's currently managing a Austrian Red Cross project, the Skybird Wash project. So this is very relevant to her area of expertise. And she's based in Kampala, just like myself. Um, so welcome, Jennifer, to the Wash uh, Skybird Wash TV chain interview. Thank you. Well, Jennifer's topic today uh, um, is menstrual hygiene management in COVID-19 uh, treatment centers in Uganda, which is uh, quite relevant to everybody here. As you know, COVID-19 is affecting everybody and menstrual hygiene management is an area that mm. uh, so much been neglected in, this, in these times. Um, and so Jennifer, uh, if you would allow me to start, why did you select such an interesting topic? Yes, I actually uh, selected this topic, George, uh, because the menstrual hygiene management is a human rights, as we all know. Everyone has a right to live hygienically when it's going through uh, her menstrual cycle. But uh, we also very well know that menstrual hygiene, men menstruation is not by choice. Everyone, every Every woman, when she reaches some, some age, is supposed to go through menstruation. So all of us have the right to live by dignity as we are going through this cycle. Yeah. That is. Thank you it. very much. That's why I uh, chose, yeah. It's very interesting. And uh, is there an interesting fact that you would like to uh, let us know uh, the most interesting fact about this topic? Uh, the most interesting part to me about this topic is that uh, when you look at the treatment centers, specifically narrowing to the treatment center to the COVID-19 treatment centers in Uganda, you find that menstrual hygiene management is greatly underlooked. At this point, people only focus at life saving. They think of what how best they can. Uh, manage the situation to ensure that people recover from COVID-19. They totally neglect other aspects of life, especially uh, uh, menstrual management at the facilities. And also as women, when uh, we are in, uh, we are exposed to danger in our life, life-threatening danger, we tend to relax about our personal hygiene, including the menstrual hygiene. All we think is to recover from the from the sickness we have in this situation, from the COVID-19 that we are faced with, and we totally forget about our menstrual hygiene. And yet this counts on us negatively after recovery. When you recover from uh, COVID-19, we tend to re reflect backward and see ourselves in that shame when we were during, uh, when we were at the treatment center, we were uh, not caring about our hygiene. We were smelling. The doctors were all over us. Other patients were near us. So this caused a lot of shame. And even thereafter, we tend to fear the people we were interacting with during this time. We tend to fear the doctors and other patients near us because we reflect backward and know how shameful it was. Mm -hmm. So this is the, actually a very interesting part, uh, fact about it that I felt is very critical to discuss, especially during COVID-19 uh, intervention. Yeah. 
All right, thank you. And it's interesting to hear the shame aspect around MHM in the COVID-19 treatment centers. Um, is there anything you'd like to change uh, about, if you had the magic powers, was, would there be anything you'd like to change about this topic? Yes, considering the, the shame of putting a woman in that kind of situations and all those, uh, if I really had this, this magic power, I would ensure that uh, especially the women treatment wings are self-contained with all the, the menstrual hygiene kit that can help the woman live with dignity and she will be fully supported. That would really be my, 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 my dream to fulfill at the treatment center so that this woman continue to live with dignity. They have all the services they need to take care of their personal hygiene at the treatment centers. Yeah. Oh, that's very interesting. And uh, yes, I wish we, we wish we all had magic powers. We would have changed the world. And uh, <laughs> I think now, uh, thank you so much for that, uh, Jennifer, and for shedding some light around MHM in the COVID-19 treatment centers. I think I'll finish off with a very on a very light note. If you are an animal, uh, what animal would you be and why? <laughs> that's an interesting question. I. Th I think if I were an animal, I would be a rabbit because uh, if you are a rabbit, there is a way you you are very bright, you can analyze issues and escape from problems very fast with a problem. So I would really love to be a, a rabbit. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I know rabbits are very fast and they, they, they think very quick on their feet. So that's very nice. Uh, so thanks, thanks again, Jennifer, for, for giving us some time to discuss about this interesting topic and uh, for keeping the chain going. I hope the viewers would uh, uh, watch us, watch the next uh, set of chain, Sky, Sky Bar chain, uh, watch chain interviews. Uh, and now Jennifer will switch seats with me and she will be the one interviewing a uh, selected person of her choice uh, within the Red Cross movement. So we, we look forward to seeing that. And thank you again, Jennifer. And to our viewers out there, I wish you a good rest of the week and uh, goodbye. Thank you. Thank you so much, George. Let me stop this recording. Ah, OK.